I've always believed that the artists of the past and the present will inspire the artists of the future. Today's guest on Art Bites is the wonderfully talented artist and screen printer, Sarah Hopkins from Swansea. Sarah is a lecturer in College Shirga in Carmarthen and somehow still manages to find some time to create the stunning urban depictions of South Wales that uh, she's now become renowned for. I managed to catch up with Sarah on Sunday as she was working on a commission at the Swansea Print Workshop. It's absolutely freezing here. Is it? Really cold. Yeah, it's really it? cold. I think nice and toasty I warm, think yeah? All right, I don't think there's been anyone in the workshop all day. All so right. So been off, so it's really cold. Yeah. Right, well, today I'm speaking with Sarah Hopkins. It's a bit of a, well, we could call it a drawn-out interview because uh, it was originally meant to be Sunday, but unfortunately, with some um, Zoom technicalities, the technicality, the main one being that I'm a complete and utter buffoon when it comes to technology, we lost the recording, so we're going to try it again. Why did you choose screen printing over all the other possibilities, all the other disciplines within fine art? So after having studied my A-levels at school, I went and did a foundation course in Swansea. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I did think that I was going to do jewellery design because I'd had a work placement uh, in a jewellery manufacturer's, but it didn't happen. I ended up enrolling on a graphics course in Swindon. Nagging and persuading my course tutor, um, he sort of allowed me to um, transfer to the illustration course. And through illustration, I was able to, I was, well, I was introduced to the printmaking room at the college. And the, the main focus in that room was screen printing. So even though I'd um, experimented with other types of printmaking before, um, the, the print room was amazing. It was, it was a huge space. Every project that I had was resolved through the medium of print. I don't think Swindon Art School exists anymore. I, I believe it's now Oxford Brooks, but um, it's not even in the same location. But yeah. it was a great little place. It was um, a really small art school. And, um, you know, I learned a lot there. It was a, it was a really great place. What I'm fascinated about um, is your depictions of the urban landscape. There's something about your work, the, the gritty sort of realism of it, and yet it still manages to get that aesthetic quality I think screen printing can provide. Yeah, I mean, I, I just love, with screen printing, it's the flat blocks of colour that you get when, when you print. I mean, the, some of the techniques, you, you see a lot of work that's created uh, with photo stencils. And although I have done quite a lot of work using that technique, uh, I particularly like the hand cut paper stencils, um, using those as a, as a, a stencils for a stencil for pushing ink through the screen. A long time ago, when I was in college, I used to use a stop out process. So I used to actually paint onto the screen and use that as a mask then for stopping the ink from going through the screen. Uh, but as time went on, I really enjoyed cutting paper, doing paper cuts, and then using them to layer sort of surfaces of ink on, on top of one another. With regards to the sort of urban landscape, I guess I'm always drawn to that. I'm all, I've always been drawn to the urban environments. I really like pattern making. And I guess, you know, where... I live in Swansea, you know, where you, you see the terraced houses and those repeated forms that really sort of catch my imagination and I could see them as blocks of colour. I, I also have done quite a lot of work based on Port Talbot and uh, both my parents worked 
in Port Talbot. And so the blast furnaces, you know, they're such a, uh, they're such a sort of blot on the landscape. They dominate the town of Port Talbot. And I really like the contrast then between those huge structures uh, compared to the tiny little terraced housing around them. And I guess you, you can say the same thing then for some of the more in, in Cardiff city centre where you see the Millennium Stadium. And again, that as a, um, a piece of architecture really dominates that landscape and dwarfs the houses around it. So I, I also quite like to play with the, you know, the scale of, of, of different types of architecture against each other. I find it much more interesting to focus on that than landscape although I do love landscape as well have done a little bit I guess recently I did some work from um from the Lacha estuary and looking out towards Gower mm. and a lot of the the beach that I was actually on is a man-made beach and even though in the work it doesn't look man-made I was intrigued by that really and that's what interested me about that particular location mm. It takes such a long time to cut those stencils and you could only use them maybe once or twice or but you know far more about this than I do. Maybe if you get a dozen prints out of them, you're lucky. Is that right? Oh, no. It all depends no? how you do it. <laughs> ah. um, so <laughs> there are lots of different um, tips that I could give you about how to to sort of create these um, cut paper stencils. I mean, the first thing, yes, they do take a long time to make. I really enjoy that process. I mm. find it quite meditative. Um, I can just sit there for hours drawing with a craft knife, cutting, cutting tiny shapes out. And, you know, using a paper stencil, I use um, almost like uh, really thin paper, almost like photocopy paper is really good actually. Um, some papers won't last when you're using them, if you're using them as stencils. So if, if you were going to use like a sugar paper or kitchen paper, it, it's too absorbent, it won't, it won't work. So you need something like a photocopy paper that's got a slightly shiny surface. Anything thicker than that is gonna give you problems. And lots of people have asked me in the past if I use um, if I use plastic, like plastic sheeting to use as stencils, because then they think, oh, I, you know, it's going to last longer and I can use it again. I can wash it, but it doesn't work. And it, I've tried and tested, you know, a number of these processes. Uh, the other thing I like to do is to um, sort of play around with the uh, the layering process. So often I will work, I will print uh, a large dark area and then cut a paper stencil and then print light color on top. And I know that sort of breaks the rules really of traditional printmaking when, where I was taught actually that you print from light to dark, but I enjoy sort of playing around with that and printing dark and light on top and then going dark again. And it, it, it makes it much easier to register your work and it gives you really, really nice effect with um, with the stencils and with the colours when they sort of work with each other. Because often the, the colour is slightly transparent. You can make colours really transparent or quite opaque. But when, when you're using the System 3 uh, process where you, you have um, two parts acrylic and one part medium then you, you've got a certain amount of transparency and when you're layering uh, light on top of dark you get some really lovely things happening right and of course the registration process is really important as well isn't it yeah i use a vacuum table so i'm using a vacuum table then the registry once you've registered one uh, print then the rest can follow so it's much easier if you're uh, printing by hand you know again there are little techniques about how you can you can do that and it is difficult for me to show you on on here without doing an actual demonstration um it, you did mention about um about prints lasting for you know up to sort of 12 well, i've used hand cut paper stencils and i've done up to an addition of 100 using a paper stencil However, I don't like to tend to make that many prints. I find it quite boring. 
Um, so, you know, it's a mechanical process, isn't it? And, um, you know, go, doing that a hundred times is, um, is uh, quite wearing, but I, I will try to make about 20 um, images and usually I'll layer my, my prints with about, well, so about to 14, 15 colors. Wow. On top of that. that yeah, that, that's quite complex. But when you got into screen printing and you were introduced to it in Swindon, were, were, was there any sort of um, inspirational character there that uh, took you down that route? I, my my um, printmaking lab was called Unbond, and uh, he's a phenomenal maker. And um, I was really inspired by the work that he did at that time. I know his work has developed massively since. You need to look him up. He's a really, really uh, sort of proficient uh, printmaker and painter. Uh, but, you know, I've been influenced by other people along the way as well. And I not not specifically by printmakers and not by, um, you know, every piece of work a certain artist has done. Uh, but there are certain things that have influenced me along the way. I really like Ines Bole's work. Um, I also like, um, there's an artist called David Batchelor. And um, he, I studied him when I was um, doing my master's actually. And he, he makes these sort of installations um, using steel boxes and, and um, uh, flat pieces of plastic, which sort of look like screen printed color. And then he shines lights through them. And all of that I find really interesting and fascinating. That, that really does inspire me. And, and I, I also really like maps, and I've done I've done quite a lot of work based on maps, um, ordnance survey maps, and um, oh, I, I took a, a short flight um, over over the Gower Peninsula, and I, I I had a flying lesson because I wanted to take photographs from the sky, and um, I flew the plane uh, obviously with somebody sitting next to me from the Fairwood Airport to to Gusina and back. I was quite proud of myself. It was a bit um, a bit sticky trying to take photographs um, from up in the sky, but it was really interesting because you're able to see the landscape and how it sort of morphs from a very um, built up environment through to being, um, you know, far more rural. So you get those dense, uh, like housing estates and then gardens getting bigger as you go out to the suburbs and then turning into fields. So I did quite a lot of work based on the patterns of the landscape, really. I also understand that you uh, have been in contact with uh, a certain member of a very famous 80s band. I did some work with uh, Martin Ware. Martin Ware, you're referring to. Um, I did a collaborative project with... Martin and also another artist, um, Tracy Mobley. And the three of us, in fact, I was introduced to Martin uh, by Tracy. And the three of us um, sort of hit it off straight away when we met because, you know, we had a lot in common. We're both interested in our industrial heritage. All of our fathers work, worked in the steelworks. Um, Martin's father worked in Sheffield as the tool maker and uh, Tracy's father worked at Llanwyrn and my father worked at Port Talbot Steelworks and um, we I think you know Martin's music has, has been stemmed or, or inspired by the industry he's captured sounds of industry and that sort of informed a lot of his work and Tracy the same so we visited Tata Steel and then we also went to Forge Masters in Sheffield made lots of uh, recordings Martin uh, creates soundscapes so we learned how to how to make soundscapes um, they both came to Swansea Print Workshop where I'm currently working so they both came here and I taught them how to do uh, some printmaking we taught and taught them my particular techniques for for screen printing and collagraphs and uh, we did some work with Tracy as well based on 
um, sort of textiles. Um, in, there was some embroidery, banner work. And um, we sort of got together and we had an exhibition of work in, in Sheffield. So it's a, it was a really interesting one. I also got asked uh, some students from Trinity St. David, some dance students to work with us as well. And they used the soundscapes that we created to devise a piece, which was also performed in the exhibition. Martin Ware, after I'd met Martin, um, about a year later, he um, curated an exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery. And he sort of invited a few people that he'd worked with previously um, to respond to the exhibition that was on at the, at the National Portrait Gallery, which happened to be a Picasso exhibition. So he asked if I would respond to it in some way. Um, and then the work that I would I created would be exhibited in um, like a late night extra event. Um, it's just an evening event. Um, so I went up and I had a look at the Picasso exhibition and I thought, what on earth am I going to do? Uh, but I then spotted these sculptures in the middle of the room uh, that were made of steel. And they were these sort of, um, sort of bow shaped figures with cutouts. And then that was it, it just clicked. I knew that I'd be able to, to, to work doing some sort of silhouette using paper cutouts, referencing, uh, things that I'd done before with steel. Um, so I ended up doing a portrait of my father, um, and my father having obviously worked in the steel works and um, created um, a technique or developed a technique um, that I'd sort of not, not done before really. It was a, a, a technique using photocopies and printing over photocopies and then offsetting the yeah. photocopied print onto new paper. So um, it was an interesting sort of experimental piece really, but I was very proud to have that exhibited um, in that exhibition. And uh, we all went up as a family and I managed to take my mum with me because my, my father passed away a few years before. So it was a really nice tribute to, to be able to yeah. sort of have him on the wall in, in the National Portrait Gallery. That's fantastic. Your mother must have been yeah. really proud. Yeah, she was really, really pleased about that. Yeah, I it, bet. Was a, it was a lovely family event. The studio that you're working in at the moment is the Swansea Print Studio. Now that, yeah. as I believe, was established something like 20 years ago. And I think you've been yeah. pretty much um, a resident there ever since. Is that right? Yeah, it's been, um, I think, uh, probably a little bit more than 20 years ago. I've certainly been involved for 20 years and it, it was set up before I uh, sort of came on the scene, really. Um, but I use the facility as a studio. Um, I have had a studio at home in the past since I moved to to um, Uplands from Gower. I lost my studio, but I've just moved again. And um, now we're living in Bryn Mill. And so um, my studio is nearly finished. We've got the top floor, we've got a townhouse. So the top floor is a studio. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that. But this is always a brilliant place to do sort of larger scale work because the facilities are really impressive, really amazing. It's an open access fine art uh, studio. It means that you can come here and you can do life drawing, you can do um, etching, collagraphs, as well as screen printing. It's really wonderful. They've got some fantastic old presses printing. And it's right in the centre of Swansea as well, near, near yeah. the uh, Grand Theatre. That's it. It's around the back of the Grand Theatre on Clarence Street. And um, anybody can become a member of, of the print studio. Um, there are various types of membership. And um, I'm lucky to be a key holder, which means I get access to, to the workshop sort of around the clock. So we just book ourselves in and, and uh, um, yeah, just help ourselves to the space. So you, you just pay for the time that you use. 
So anybody who's interested in seeing your work would be able to visit your own website, I presume? Yeah, so um, I try to keep the website up to date as possible. Uh, sometimes it's quite tricky. Uh, so yeah, you can view my work um, on my website. I also show my work at Art at Gallery in Swansea and also through Phantom Fine Art as well, who are in um, San Zylo. Well, Sarah, thank you very much for joining me. I hope to catch up with you soon. Yeah, that would be really would good. Be nice. Yeah, it would be. We'll have a beer. Definitely, or two. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Michael. Take okay. Care. Take care. Stay Bye. safe. I'll put the links in the description below the video, so if anybody wants to look at your work, they'll know exactly where to go. That's Super. better. Yes. <laughs>